Follow me into the heart of danger. We're exploring the top 15 riskiest places to live, where residents face extraordinary challenges every day. These homes, marked by their extreme conditions, environmental threats, and often the sheer force of nature, are not for the faint of heart. Let's begin with number 15, the Stenard Rock Lighthouse. The Stenard Rock Lighthouse, perched on a submerged reef in the waters of Lake Superior, stands a testament to human resilience in the face of nature's elements. Often referred to as the loneliest place in North America, this lighthouse is a solitary beacon in the midst of the world's largest freshwater lake. Getting here is tough, and staying here all by yourself is even more difficult. Constructed in the late 19th century, the lighthouse was strategically placed to guide ships safely through the hazardous waters of Lake Superior. In its remote location, approximately 24 miles from the nearest shoreline, it presents an extraordinary challenge for construction and maintenance. The conditions of Lake Superior, known for sudden weather changes and powerful storms, make access to this light difficult and perilous. During winter, the lake freezes, enveloping the lighthouse in ice, and brave keepers have had to endure cold while ensuring the light remained operational. The solitude experienced by those stationed at this place is unparalleled, with only a distant horizon meeting the vast expanse of water. The loneliness of Stenard Rock is embedded in its history, with the keepers enduring weeks and sometimes months without human contact. Supplies and relief were infrequent due to the challenging journey to reach the light. This isolation took a toll on the mental and physical well-being of those who served here, highlighting the extraordinary sacrifices made in the name of maritime safety. Number 14. Monte Rosa Hut The Monte Rosa Hut, perched on the Monte Rosa Massif near Zermatt, Switzerland, stands 9,400 feet above sea level on a rocky outcrop known as Unteri Platt. It's owned by the Swiss Alpine Club. This mountain refuge serves as the starting point for ascending the summit and exploring neighboring peaks. Construction started in 1894 next to the Border Glacier. It underwent significant transformation in 2009, though, emerging as a state-of-the-art eco-friendly structure crafted from wood with an aluminum shell. Positioned on the western side of the Monte Rosa Massif, overlooking the Grenzgletscher and surrounded by prominent peaks like Dufferspitz, Liskam, and Matterhorn, the hut offers a strategic vantage point. Accessible via a trail leading through the Gorner Glacier, the journey continues over Grenz Gletscher, concluding with a direct ascent to the hut at approximately 8,500 feet. The hut's historical evolution traces back to the original Betemps hut built in 1895, later enlarged in 1918. It transitioned to the ownership of the Monte Rosa section in 1929 and underwent successive expansions, reaching a capacity of 160 in 1984. A new five-story polygonal building stands on stainless steel foundations, featuring a spiral wooden interior and an aluminum shell. The hut aims to fulfill 90% of its power requirements through solar energy, stored initially in valve-regulated lead-acid battery cells and later replaced with lithium phosphate batteries in 2020. Melting glaciers provide water collected within a reservoir above the hut, while bands of windows facilitate solar heating and energy redistribution within the building. Number 13. Patio House, Greece Nestled on the windswept island of Carpathos in Greece, a remarkable property captivated the attention of a French-Swedish couple with a penchant for windsurfing. Situated in Afiati, the site offered expansive vistas of the Aegean Sea and windsurfers gracefully riding the waves. The rugged, untouched terrain set the stage for this architectural endeavor, posing a challenge of seamlessly integrating a house into this dramatic landscape without compromising its intrinsic character. Rather than attempting to mimic the surrounding landscape, the house was conceived as a distinct object delicately placed on the site, harmonizing with the untouched beauty of the cliffs and the Aegean Sea. The relationship between the landscape and the building was envisioned as a symbiotic entity, reminiscent of how a shell gradually merges with the rock over time. The property has two natural plateaus, and to maximize those views, the building extends beyond the higher plateau, creating a striking cantilever effect that enhances the overall experience. The design focuses on blurring the boundaries between the interior and exterior, incorporating a single-story layout organized around an inner patio. This visionary approach not only fulfills the owner's desire for a sanctuary in this raw landscape, but also shields them from the potent winds characteristic of Carpathos. Constructed with reinforced concrete, the building features a cantilevered portion, making a bold architectural statement. This exterior exudes a robust, exposed concrete aesthetic, creating a compelling contrast with the soft and light interiors. Drawing inspiration from traditional Carpathian architecture, the interior incorporates Scandinavian furniture and diverse palettes of materials. 
Carefully positioned windows of varying sizes frame panoramic views of the sea and the natural surroundings, accentuating the connection between the man-made dwelling and the untamed beauty that envelops it. Number 12. Bivaco Brady's Hut The Bivaco Brady Hut, conceived by BCW Collective, stands as an outcome of an invited competition organized by the Academy and Cantieri d'Alta Quota in memory of Claudio Brady, a renowned politician and alpinist who met a tragic end in a climbing accident in 2017. Envisioned for a high-altitude location in Valladosta, this design emerged in 2021 as a tailored solution for the secluded Verostan Valley, resulting in an elevation of over 8,200 feet. The initial hut proposal took shape during the Architecture for Landscape course in 2019 under Roberto Dini and later evolved through a design competition, ultimately won by BCW Collective. Resembling a telescope, the structure, enveloped in lightweight aluminum panels, opens southwards, offering panoramic views of Grivola Peak and Gran Paradiso, one of the 4,000-meter summits conquered by Claudio. Beyond its symbolic significance, though, this orientation serves an environmental strategy, harnessing solar gains to warm the bivouac during cold winter months. Internally, the space prioritizes functionality and immersive sensory experiences within the mountainous surroundings. A double row of bunks converges at the common area, characterized by an expansive view. This entrance vestibule provides a storage for gear. The hut, entirely prefabricated, minimizes environmental impact with limited helicopter trips for transportation and rapid assembly in a few days. Designed for adaptability, the metal frame foundation's anchor points enable the structure to conform to uneven terrain or rest directly on the rock, ensuring a minimal footprint. Moreover, its complete reversibility allows for the restoration of the site to its pristine condition when the hut is eventually removed. The Bivaco Brady emerges as a flexible, sustainable structure that seamlessly integrates with its alpine surroundings while honoring the legacy of Claudio Brady. Number 11. The Balancing Barn the Balancing Barn, perched on a picturesque site near Thorington in Suffolk, England, exudes an air of precarious equilibrium that mirrors its name. With a length of 98 feet and a daring 49-foot cantilever over a slope, this architectural marvel appears poised on the verge of toppling into the embrace of nature. Strategically located by a lake, the barn draws inspirations from the local building vernacular, sporting a traditional shape and reflective metal sheeting that shimmer in harmony with the surroundings. Approaching the structure along a 984-foot driveway initially deceives the eye as it presents itself as a modest two-person abode. The grand reveal occurs only at the terminus of the track, unveiling the full length of the barn and the audacious cantilever. About a thousand feet long, the cantilevered portion plunges boldly over the slope, immersing the dwelling into natural panoramas. The barn's dramatic positioning stems from a deliberate design choice to offer a linear experience of nature. The slope guides visitors from ground level to tree height, creating a dynamic outdoor encounter. The cantilevering spectacle, made possible by the building's rigid structure, imparts a sense of balance as 50% of the barn extends into free space. Secluded by trees, the elongated sides of the barn provide privacy, while the exterior, clad in reflective metal, mirrors the local building style. A hidden staircase interrupts the bedroom sequence, offering access to the garden below, and the cantilevered end has a spacious living area surrounded by full-height sliding windows, delivering continuous views of the ever-changing yet risky landscape. Number 10. Fridrangaviti Lighthouse Perched atop a towering sea stack off the coast of the Westman Islands in Iceland, this isolated outpost, built just before the outbreak of World War II, is one of the loneliest and most captivating beacons on Earth. The cluster of slender rock pillars resembling fingers reaching for the sky creates a surreal, inspiring backdrop for this red-roofed lighthouse. Situated about four and a half miles from mainland Iceland, the tallest rocky cliff stretches a formidable 120 feet upwards, forming the foundation for this solitary maritime structure. It was constructed in 1938, a time when helicopters had yet to grace the skies, and building it was a daring and demanding endeavor. Workers faced the elements with grit and determination, scaling the slick rocks, enduring rain, and braving fervent winds. One misstep there could mean a perilous plunge into the waters. As aviation technology evolved, the isolation of this light became somewhat more accessible. Helicopters now transport maintenance workers to the lighthouse, but the journey remains a formidable one. The relentless waves and killer whales lurking in the waters below serve as a constant reminder of the harsh and unpredictable environment surrounding this lonely outpost. The whitewashed beacon atop the sea stacks evolves a sense of solitude and vulnerability, perched on its lofty pedestal amidst the vastness of the ocean. 
the lighthouse, with its storied history and perilous location, continues to capture imaginations of those who appreciate the indomitable spirit of human ingenuity in the midst of isolation and nature's raw power. Number 9. Hankin Island Home In the waters between the Mantolo King Bridge and the Seaside Bridge lies a weathered relic known as the House on the Island. This mysterious structure, situated on Middle Sedge Island, has captured the attentions of passers-by, standing as a testament to the island's enigmatic past. Once home to a two-story colonial built in the late 1960s, this dwelling now bears the scars of Superstorm Sandy's wrath, with broken windows, a dilapidated roof, and a crumbling bulkhead. Dubbed Hankins Island by locals after Charles Hankins, the former owner, this secluded haven had a unique history. Charles Hankins, heir to a renowned boat building business established in 1912, was a fixture in the region. Hankins, a skilled craftsman, produced award-winning Jersey Sea Skiffs, earning accolades for nearly a century. In the late 1960s, he acquired Middle Sedge Island, seeking solace and seclusion. After constructing a house on the island, the Federal Wetlands Act was passed, restricting further development. Undeterred, Hankins enjoyed the solitude with his wife, equipped with a generator and a private well. Eventually, he sold the house, and the new owners moved the colonial structure off the island by barge, making way for a new residence in 1991. In 2006, it was even rumored that Robert De Niro expressed interest in the property. However, Superstorm Sandy wreaked havoc on Middle Sedge Island, leaving the house damaged and the island flooded. Foreclosure bloomed, and the property once listed for $6.5 million became a financial burden. The 2015 sale included 14.4 acres of the 25-acre island, accessible only by boat. The house, a sprawling 4,800 square feet, featured a pool room, rec room, wet bar, sun porch, built-in heated pool, and 1,200 square foot guest house. Today, Middle Stedge Island, with its storied past and dilapidated house, stands as a weathered relic, a haunting reminder of a bygone era and the relentless forces of nature. Number 8. The UFO Treehouse Sweden's UFO Tree Hotel, situated 50 kilometers south of the Arctic Circle, introduces its latest guest room, the UFO, designed by Swedish architect Bertil Harström. Unlike the earlier camouflaging concept, the UFO is a steel structure floating on four tree trunks, accessible through a hatch in the bottom via retractable steps. Accommodating two adults and two children, the suspended space offers a unique night stay for over $500 US. The interior, designed by Lena Bergstrom, features UFO-themed furnishings and bed linen, enhancing this intergalactic atmosphere. This really isn't your everyday treehouse. As the name suggests, the UFO conjures images of interstellar journeys and extraterrestrial encounters. Designed using meticulous advanced composite materials, the focus was on creating a durable, lightweight, and sustainable masterpiece. The floating Space Age exterior gives way to contemporary comforts. Elegance meets functionality here in its 1,000 square feet of space, adequately accommodating five guests. While it provides a cozy double bed for adults, children even get separate sleeping corners, making it an ideal family getaway. The UFO's distinct design isn't its only allure. Situated in the vast expanse of a forest, it offers breathtaking views of the Lule River. Just like the other unique rooms at the Tree Hotel Resort, the UFO is poised 13 to 20 feet above the ground, delivering an elevated perspective of the scenic surroundings. Accessibility? Well, whether you prefer a ramp, a bridge, or electric stairs, the choice is yours. All for an otherworldly 545 bucks a night. Moving on to number 7, the Bird's Nest Treehouse. For nature enthusiasts seeking a vacation beyond conventional hotels and don't mind a little high-flying risk, Sweden's Tree Hotel, crafted by seven Scandinavian architects and managed by Kent Lindvall in Britta, offers an extraordinary retreat. Nestled north of the Arctic Circle in Harads, this unique establishment presents themed accommodations for those exploring the Aurora Borealis. The idea for the Tree Hotel emerged in 2010 when the Lindvalls drew inspiration from Jonas Selberg Augustin's film The Tree Lover, depicting city dwellers building a house in the forest. The Tree Hotel's seven suites are ingeniously arranged within a wooden section. Now, Kent Lindvall emphasizes the hotel's mission to provide upscale lodging in a serene environment, free from the typical stress of daily life. The recently launched seventh room, Snuheta, stands as a mirror cube and a charred wood hut embodying this vision. Inside, the bird's nest transforms into a high-end, modern-designed room adorned with wooden panels throughout. The concept cleverly utilizes space, accommodating a family with two children through a double bed and two singles in separate bedrooms with sliding doors. 
Accessible by a retractable staircase, the nest condenses luxury into about 180 square feet, significantly smaller than standard hotel rooms. It's elevated 20 feet above the ground. That retractable staircase adds an element of playful nostalgia, reminiscent of a child in their cozy cabin. The Tree Hotel offers a distinct escape, blending architectural innovation with the tranquility of nature and an unforgettable stay. Number 6. Church Potosi not quite a place to live in anymore, this next entry is the wildest and wettest. Yet between 1985 and 2008, those navigating the Urubante Reservoir in Venezuela encountered an unusual sight, a solitary mildewed cross emerging from the water, hinting at something significant beneath the waves. As time progressed, the cross rose higher, unveiling a massive Gothic structure. Now, contrary to the perception of the structure ascending, the Urubante Reservoir's water levels were receding, exposing what had been hidden for over two decades. By 2010, the water had diminished substantially, unveiling a vast stretch of land and a towering Gothic church that had long remained nearly submerged. This church belonged to the city of Potosi, intentionally flooded in 1985 to harness hydroelectric power. The citizens were forced to relocate, leaving their homes abandoned, and for 20 years, the cross atop the church steeple stood as the only sole remnant of their submerged city, initially soaring high into the sky, only to be brought down to earth, not entirely submerged. Less frequently observed is a building, such as the steeple of a church, persisting above the water's surface, and that enduring presence of the cross atop this structure, proudly visible, has long served as a symbol, marking the location of this city. Yet Venezuela's severe droughts and water shortages have led to the effective drainage of the reservoir, once again revealing the church. While the facade and steeple endure, the church's body has eroded, presenting a haunting sight, a seemingly whole and beautiful church from the front, only to expose its gutted and empty interior from the side. For years, the emerging cross symbolized the spirit of a town washed away, and now the revealed, hollowed church serves as an eerie metaphor for a town stripped of its inhabitants. Number 5. The Tal Volcano Island In the heart of the Philippines, the Tal Volcano has long stood as the second most active volcano, declaring a permanent danger zone unsuitable for human habitation. Despite official warnings and laws against settlement, over 5,000 people have called the lush island, adorned with craters in the middle of a glistening lake, their home. The recent eruption has once again exposed the risks inherent in residing in areas threatened by volcanic activity, landslides, floods, and typhoons in a country susceptible to natural disasters. While no casualties have been reported thus far, the eruption has spotlighted the ongoing challenge of relocating settlements away from perilous zones. The affected villages in the case of Tal are in violation of laws that, despite being in place, have not been enforced. Renato Stadium, the head of the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, highlighted the danger of living on the island, a permanent danger zone repeatedly warning against settlement. The inherent risks of residing on the island were tragically exemplified in a 1965 eruption that claimed over 200 lives and devastated villages. Poverty, a shortage of land, and desperation have historically driven people to settle on the island despite its hazardous nature. Mayor Jerry Natanwan, overseeing two of the island villages, acknowledged the difficulty of declaring it a no-man's land due to historical attempts being thwarted. Hunger and necessity often lead to people finding a way, even in the face of official prohibitions. Additionally, tourism has played a role in sustaining life on the island, drawing visitors with its landscapes, cooler climate, and idyllic views. Overlooking the lake and Volcano Island, thriving tourism has transformed the region into a hub of hotels, restaurants, and spas. The allure of boat tours, horseback rides, hiking trails, and bird watching has contributed significantly to the local economy, generating an estimated $300,000 annually. As authorities grapple with the aftermath of the eruption, discussions revolve around whether residents should be allowed to return permanently to the island. However, enforcing measures presents challenges, as residents may be hesitant to leave their farms unguarded. Number 4. La Iglesia de los Remedios Sitting snug amidst brush and grass, the Great Pyramid of Tepanapa, also known as the Great Pyramid of Cholula, stands as the largest pyramid in the world. Despite its grandeur, the pyramid has been mistaken for a hill over the centuries thanks to the veiling overgrowth and the presence of an old Spanish chapel crowning its summit. Constructed over 2,000 years ago, this ancient marvel surpasses the volume of even the famed Egyptian pyramids, capturing the imagination with its blend of Teotihuacan and El Taijian architectural elements. 
The pyramid's uniqueness has puzzled archaeologists, offering a tapestry of historical influences that adds to its allure. However, during the pre-Columbian era in Mexico, power shifts prompted the disuse of the pyramid in favor of other structures. The exact reason for the pyramid's overgrowth with shrubbery remains uncertain, raising questions about whether it fell into disuse or if during the impending Spanish arrival, the Cholulans deliberately buried it as a communal effort. When the Spanish conquistadors led by Cortes reached Tolula in 1519, their attention was consumed by the decimation of indigenous communities and their more conspicuous sacred sites. Oblivious to the colossal pyramid beneath the vegetation, they mistook it for a hill and promptly built La Iglesia de los Remedios, a church that still stands atop the pyramid today. Over time, as the soil gradually gave way, archaeologists uncovered the pyramid's intricate features, and the site along with its subterranean labyrinth is open to visitors for both guided and unguided tours. Visitors are advised to explore the tunnels during daylight, adding an extra layer of mystery to the history of the Great Pyramid of Cholula. Number 3. Alpine Shelter Skuta Slovenian architectural firm Ofis, in collaboration with ACT II engineers and Harvard Graduate School of Design students, had unveiled an innovative alpine shelter nestled in the unforgiving mountaintops of Mount Skuta in Slovenia. Replacing a rusty 50-year-old bivouac, the modular shelter accommodates up to eight hikers, and it was transported in three sections via helicopter. Facing extreme conditions and environmental forces, the design prioritizes resilience against the weather, radical temperature shifts, and rugged terrain. Triple glazed structural glass was incorporated into the shelter's large windows, ensuring both safety and a comfortable environment for adventurers to relish in those views. To minimize impact on the site and surrounding landscape, the shelter was prefabricated off-site, broken down into three separate sections, and flown in via helicopter. The modules were securely connected and anchored to the ground with strategic pin connections acting as sort of foundations, reducing disturbance to the mountainside. The first module includes the entrance, storage space, and a compact food prep zone. The second module provides an open space for relaxation and socializing, doubling as an additional sleeping area. And the third module features wooden built-in bunk beds. The hope is that the Mount Skuta Alpine Shelter will serve as a refuge for climbers in need and endure through their care for many years. Situated in the Alps in Slovenia, Mount Skuta stands at 8,307 feet, the third highest peak in the Alps, renowned for its glacier on the north wall. This alpine shelter is now available for use by local mountain climbers, offering a resilient haven amidst the challenging terrain. Number 2. Bonifacio, Corsica Nestled on the southern tip of Corsica, Bonifacio stands as a commune perched on the precipice of the Mediterranean Sea, exuding an air of both historical significance and precarious beauty. Guy de Massopont's short story of Vendetta captures the essence of this setting, where rugged landscapes meet the tumultuous waves of the strait, a stretch of water that separates it from Sardinia. This commune, situated on the only major harbor along the southern coast, extends its reach to include the offshore Isle of Aisy marking its distinction as the southernmost commune in metropolitan France. Now, remarkably, it finds itself closer to the capital cities of 20 other European and African countries than to its own Paris. The geographical juxtaposition adds a layer of isolation to this already dramatic location. The beauty of Bonifacio is further heightened by the presence of the Isles Lavezzi, integral to the marine park there. Spanning over 794 square kilometers, this protected area serves as a sanctuary against the passage of ships carrying hazardous materials. The park, established through a collaboration between France and Italy in 1993, underscores the commitment to preserving rich biodiversity of the strait. Bonifacio's cityscape is a tale of two sections, the Vieverville, or La Hauteville, perched on a citadel overlooking the Mediterranean, and La Marine, extending along the narrow islet below. The citadel, constructed in the 9th century, had witnessed centuries of reconstruction and served as an administrative hub for the French Foreign Legion. Its commanding presence now stands as a museum preserving the city's rich history. From the sea, Bonifacio appears as a white city, seemingly suspended over the waters below. It's a testament to the delicate dance between human settlements and the formidable forces of nature. Number 1. Bivaco Luca Pasqualetti al Morion Perched at an astounding altitude of over a thousand feet in the remote reaches of the Italian Alps, this location stands as an architectural marvel and an invitation for intrepid explorers. This tin shelter serves as a refuge for climbers paying tribute to Luca Pasqualetti, a mountain enthusiast who met a tragic end in May of 2014 in the Apuan Alps. The ridge, adorned with forgotten yet remarkable itineraries, provided the perfect backdrop for the shelter's construction, aiming to revive these secluded places for mountaineering enthusiasts. 
Realizing the bivouac in the rugged Morian environment presented an extraordinary challenge. Subjected to extreme weather conditions, including temps plummeting below negative 20 degrees Celsius and winds reaching over 200 kilometers an hour, heavy precipitation and substantial snowfall, the architects needed to make construction choices that balance simplicity, efficacy, and resilience. Constructed to withstand the harsh climate, the bivouac's components were designed for a lightweight transport and easy assembly. Fully reversible, the bivouac can be removed at the end of its life cycle without leaving a lasting trace on the ground. The entrance, strategically positioned on the side, divides the interior into day and night areas, allowing for a massive panoramic window on the east-facing facade. The living areas feature a table with eight seats on stools and chests, along with integrated fittings for food prep and storage compartments for climbing. The night area, located in the rear, is composed of two wooden platforms with mattresses accommodating up to eight beds. Equipped with a small solar panel and battery for minimal lighting, the bivouac marries practical functionality with sustainable design. The architectural triumph of this thing not only stands as a testament to human resilience against nature's extremes, but it also beckons adventurers to explore the breathtaking vistas of the Italian Alps, offering a unique blend of design sophistication and environmental consciousness. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.